Mix it with Mike. Plugin of the week is the Plugin Alliance BX Console 4000 SSL E and G. These are two revisions uh, to the BX Console E and BX Console G, uh, which came out a while back with the TMT technology. And um, SSL apparently was so impressed by what they saw and heard uh, that they decided to uh, work alongside with uh, the Plugin Alliance and Brainworks and uh, attach their name to it. So what's great about it is not only do you get a, um, a look that is just like what you find on the actual real hardware, but you also get uh, some additional sound modeling. So uh, Brainworks worked directly with the SSL engineers. Uh, they went back and they revisited all the component modeling. Uh, they went back uh, and had a look at the original schematics. Uh, they overhauled the EQ dynamics and filters um, and added in a couple new features. So if you're curious whether this just as uh, a, a revision, it sounds exactly like the BX console E or G, and uh, is there a reason really to, you know, upgrade? There absolutely is uh, um, a reason to upgrade. So uh, in my first workings with this and experience with this, uh, I found an ind a difference right away. It's hard to kind of measure. I actually set up something which uh, I'll, I may demonstrate here where I um, set up the identical settings, set it up um, so the, the modules uh, were in digital mode. Uh, just to see and did a, a phase inversion uh, between the two channels on the drums just to see what the differences were. And what you end up with is, is you know, like noise and spurts of little stuff that are here and there. And it's hard to say. It's like that all that tells you is it makes a difference, that there's something different going on. Um, and uh, so, you know, there's something that's, that's in depth here. So let's get right into it. Um, now, the E-Series console is a late 70s. Um, revision, uh, the E-Series. Um, the 4000, the SSL 4000 comes from the output buses. So uh, 4000 consoles had a quad output. Uh, so they were quad consoles from those early SSL E and G consoles. They had a 6000 E-Series console, which had three stereo buses. So it had six outputs. The 8000 had four stereo buses. The 9000 had four stereo buses and, and a separate stereo left-right bus. I guess they didn't go to 10,000. I'm not sure that would be the total number. But that, but as a formula, and in studios where it would say a 4096, that made it, um, that there were 96 channels, or a 4064 uh, meant a 64 channel desk. So if you ever saw uh, something in a studio that said it had an SSL 4056, that would tell you how big the console is 56 channels, generally all in, in buckets or groups of eight. So if we take a quick look here, um, the toolbar is mostly the same, except for there are a couple of added features here. You have um, a V gain all, so this is the noise, and what this does is it allows you to take the overall uh, virtual gain. So if you just want to eliminate all the noise, you can just pull this right down from the all feature here. And then uh, the THD, so the harmonic distortion, so you can globally push that up or pull it down. Now, if you hit a peak limit, like if you have a THD on, say, the bass and you have it already cranked all the way up, when you do this, it's not going to add any more THD. It'll, it'll say at its stopped position. Or if it's a couple away, it'll go up as far as it can go and stop. And same on the other end if you pull it all the way back the other uh, way. So it works like that. There's also uh, the ability to solo the mid and side. Now, this doesn't give you MS processing. In other words, you're not separating out mid and side and EQing as a mid side. Uh, so, it, but it gives you the ability to solo those things there. Um, on the input section, you get your input gain. Uh, the virtual gain again is the noise. The THD is the total harmonic distortion. So, as you pull that up, you'll just be driving the input signal a little bit more, get a little bit more grit, you know, um, an edge to the sound. Um, got a phase invert, a mute switch. Uh, the analogs in digital mode, what you get is uh, the identical processing for every channel. When you go to analog mode, uh, you get a, a 1 through 72 options on uh, the analog modeling. So this brings in the, the TMT, the tolerance modeling technology. So they've modeled all of the tolerance of all the components, which includes capacitors, resistors, and blah, 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 all of that. And uh, worked with that to create a formulation so that every channel strip has slight variation, and that's true to original hardware. And uh, you can randomly activate that on the one channel or randomly switch the channel strip numbers for all of them. If you go beyond 72, 
uh, it'll start to repeat numbers. But at that point, it does make a big difference. Uh, it's one of the things that really drew me to this in the beginning. Otherwise, the modeling is really amazing and excellent. A uh, couple of other added features. So the first part in the signal flow chain after you get to the input gain, let's just go to that, is the filters. Now, on a normal SSL, there's a split switch because the filters by default come after the four band EQ. Uh, but here they're permanently split at the beginning of the channel strip and they extended the frequencies here with times three divided by three. So that's identical to what you had uh, before with the BXE. So most of the stuff is the same. You can feed it into the dynamic side chain so you can filter into the side chain of the compressor and gate. Uh, the compressor and gate go in together. That's true to the original. If you don't want the uh, range control there, you just pop that out, uh, or the uh, expander, just set it to zero range. If you don't want the compressor, you set the ratio one to one, um, and, and you're pretty much good to go. So that's the way that you kind of bypass those. Um, you also still have the ability to switch between the E or the G version, which is uh, different. They act uh, a bit differently. Um, now there's a fast and slow attack, so you can uh, do this, uh, this equivalent of kind of, it's like a push-pull knob on the actual console for a slower fast attack. Fast attack is like around 3 milliseconds or so, slow attack is around 30 milliseconds or so. There's also a built-in high-pass filter here, which is independent, so you could you keep this for the audio chain and put the high-pass filter there. It also has a secondary release to help protect against pumping and breathing, so you have a secondary release control. Um, um, if you're doing some pretty heavy compression work, but uh, when things go light, it doesn't uh, pump too much. And then you have a parallel mix that's built right in. So all of these are features that are not part of the original. The original just had the three knobs here and, uh, and the fast, uh, slow attack setting. Uh, the link is kind of cool because um, within... A stereo channel strip like I have here, if I link the two sides, then uh, the side chains will be linked. So if, if the right side happens to trigger more, the left side will get the same compression uh, with its settings. Uh, if you unlink them, then the left and right will be independent of each other. So if you have something that's a little bit heavier on the left um, channel of that stereo uh, sound, whatever it is, then it will compress more on the left and, and not as much on the right. So think about that as you're working with it, whether you want to link it or keep them separate. Um, uh, also here, so we have the gate, it works in expand mode or gate mode. Uh, in gate mode, they add a feature here called hysteresis. On the SSL consoles, I think it's uh, fixed at a 5B dB differential. Uh, what that essentially does is there is a separate uh, release threshold uh, uh, from the open threshold. And it's typical as always that the release threshold is lower. Uh, and so the hysteresis amount would be that difference, that variation, or how much of a difference is the open threshold or the closed threshold. So that just gives you it on a variable control, um, which is uh, different from what SSL's default fixed number. I think it's pretty much, it's minus five on the SSL. Uh, so the difference uh, is just the ratio. So the expander is kind of like a one to two expansion. So it's a soft expansion. Um, used to be a great thing for effects returns and stuff like that. And then the gate is like a harder, you know, um, um, uh, drop down. You know, you get a faster vector on the uh, release. Um, again, you can go between E and G and you can key externally. Uh, this is actually kind of cool because very few of the channel strips actually allow for external keying. It's one of the things that I like about it. And the actual hardware console does allow for external keying, which is cool. Um, now, the sections here and on the G are identical. So I'm not going to repeat those except for you can go from G to E. So you have, if you like the sound of one or the other, you have the options to go back and forth. The EQ, though, is different. There are basically four flavors of EQ. Now, on the original SSL E-series consoles, there were three types of EQs that you could get. Um, the two primary ones, uh, which were also available to be used on G-series consoles, the card type, uh, it literally, like if you pulled out the channel strip, there's one screw that holds it into place. You pull it out of an edge slot, pop the, the, the kind of EQ that you want in there. One screw keeps it into place. You pop it back into the console, and all of a sudden you would have an E-series EQ. Of course, nobody did that. <laughs> Um, but many, uh, when SSL G-Series consoles came out, many of them had half their console with E-Series EQs and half the console with G-Series EQs because some people didn't like the E, some people liked the G better uh, or, you know, like the E better. Uh, so it was back and forth. But on the E, there were two basic types, the brown knob type, which is a little bit warmer sounding, 
um, has less tonal character, perhaps, or a different tonal character. It's a little smoother sounding, maybe it's the better way. And the black knot, uh, which has a little bit more grab to it, a little bit um, uh, more tonal character. Uh, to me, I like the uh, black knob uh, by default, but where I feel like this is a little bit too edgy, then the brown knob sort of has a tendency to kind of soften things up a little bit. Uh, what the actual changes are, there's nothing in terms of what the knobs do, you know, in terms of the plus minus dB amounts and all of that sort of stuff. Three band EQ, that's a high frequency shelf that could be a bell if you hit the switch. Uh, same on the low end. And and then you have two full um, um, uh, high mid frequency, full parametric, and a low mid frequency, full parametric. And then when you switch back and forth, you just get the different flavor. Um, and uh, sometimes you'll just, if you're not getting what you want with one, switch to the other. Most of the time, that'll give you what you want. You could also put this uh, the this into the dynamic side chain if you need something more sophisticated than just a high-pass filter. Um, you could also put it pre-dynamic. So sometimes when you do heavy EQ, feeding that into the compression helps to glue the sound back together. That's a, a classic SSL trick if you're not familiar. Also, as the uh, original VCA fader, which is a non-motorized fader, you'll see over here on the G series, they added in uh, automation software, which was a hybrid moving fader VCA system. So you could turn the motors off if you didn't like the motors, and you would have all the exact same levels with a stationary stable fader and the, and the rides happening underneath with the VCAs. If you switch the motors on, now all of a sudden you're uh, running through the fader wiper, and then you can program uh, the moving faders if you preferred that. So uh, they have that there, um, at least for the visual of it. I don't know if they actually did the whole audio chain through that. All the other stuff is the same. Now on this end, um, there were two types of EQs. The original, uh, the G-Series EQ, there was only one version that came out with a G, and it's sort of a, the pink knob uh, version that you see here. And you have a fixed shelf. This is always a shelf. You have the high mid and low mid frequency EQs and then you have a low frequency shelf. So there's no bell switch. What they replaced the bell switch with was a times three and divide by three, uh, which was actually right, you know, where it says shelf right there, okay? Um, and what this does is it takes, it attaches to the frequency of uh, the full parametric. Uh, the reason they did this was uh, in the mid, late 80s, um, uh, Rupert Neve came up with a focus right console that had times three, uh, divide by three switches on the band so it extended the frequency response. So right now this goes from 600 to 7K. If I hit the times three, it multiplies the frequency. So now I have a full parametric up to 21K. Same down here where it goes from 2.5K down to point, uh, 200 Hertz. If I hit the divide by three, now it goes down to 67 Hertz. So it gives you an extended range with the full parametric. And so the approach with the EQ is quite different. Sometimes if you want to get that low end of the kick drum, you just pull that frequency down, hit the divide by three boost with a narrow Q, and you can really focus in the thump of the kick drum. And it works incredibly well. So you, you factor in like a different approach with the EQ. The other EQ is an interesting one. It's called the orange knob EQ. And this is one, there weren't were not a lot of consoles that had it. Um, a lot of the consoles in Japan happened to have this, which was um, because um, the uh, they called it the sort of Poltec EQ. It wasn't meant to sound like, it's nothing like a passive EQ, it sounds nothing like a Poltec, but they shaped the resonant filters that you have on a, on a uh, Poltec EQ um, and put those same resonant shapes into the EQs here. So you have those same resonant shapes. So when you boost uh, that low end, uh, you get a dip right above the frequency where you're boosting. And so it gives you that little dip before you get the boost, which sort of accentuates it. And some people like this. Um, I've worked on SSLs for years. I mean, you know, probably, you know, well over like a decade and a half, you know. Um, close to two decades working on SSLs, at least that, consistently. I never worked on a console that had an orange knob EQ. <laughs> I, but I've worked on every console that, that had every other variation, black knob, brown knob. So they're, they're not that common. But so it, it's an interesting variation. Just be aware that when you go back here, now you have your bell shelving switch, okay, uh, back. So it doesn't take on the G-Series uh, logistics. Okay, so those are those are all the the, the fundamentals of it. Um, it's a really interesting history as you go through SSL. Uh, hopefully, um, 
uh, Brainworks will do a K-series uh, console that would be really amazing because that's also an incredible sounding console, JK series console, uh, which was sort of expanded on this. But what I want, did want to show you just real quick here, just to kind of show you what some of the differences were, uh, I had duplicated the exact settings here. And I'm just going to go back to this strip here, put it back on my A setting. So I set up something just to have a little quick audio example here. But I wanted to show you here, if I just uh, mute this channel out, we'll have uh, drums. Let me just take out the guitars here for a second. So this is just a basic EQ on a drum stem right here. And now what I did is I put the identical settings on the BX console E, okay, uh, matched everything up to be exactly the same, and then I phase invert it here. So uh, this should cancel, or mostly cancel. See, so you hear some frequencies and you can hear some differences with the uh, with the gate or the compressor, the way that the compressor attacks is slightly different. So it just shows that there's something there. Of course, it's going to be very low level. Um, and, you know, that's the variation. That's why I kept this on digital. OK, now I'm going to switch it to analog. So if I switch it to analog, all kinds of other things will happen. Then it would be assuming that the TMT was exactly the same with each of those. So on digital, at least I can verify that. So that was my quick test there. I just wanted to show you that there is a difference. Uh, and now it's uh, it's provable. And uh, so now let's, let's go to uh, the basic sonics of it. So here, uh, let me just close that up because I don't need to see that anymore. And call this up. All right, so these are the two SSL channels. I just set this up for, you know, guitars and drums. Let's just have a quick listen. This is the E-Series setup. Uh, oh, hold on. I think I hid that uh, channel by accident. And what I meant to do, it's still canceling out the drums. Hide and make an active. There we go. Okay, now. Just to give you like just like a quick thing of of um, you know what this sounds like. All I did was I I just put um, a, a little boost here up at 10k. Uh, I have a boost here at 4.5, and uh, just give it a little bit of snap, little little dip around 200, open up the sound, and then a bell boost at around 50 hertz. Just to give it a little bit of thump on the bottom. Uh, so just a straight ahead EQ, no filters. And then just a simple slow attack, right? So just to get that that kick and snare to kind of push through a little bit, the transient to push through a little bit, quick release on the compression. So it's uh so it's a um, fast release, five um, five to one. Uh, the sweet spot for most of the compression ratio is on the SSL, which is the VCA compressor. It's usually like in the three to eight to one range. Uh, that's where you're gonna probably get the majority of the nuts and bolts of your work done. Uh, but the full range of compression is really great, especially if you want to run a parallel, go to an infinite to one compression, super heavy, and then uh, use the mix control to parallel it in. So that can work really well. Um, and then, you know, on the guitars, similar type of thing with the pumping, but a slower release just to kind of warm them up a little bit. And uh, and then just a little bit of, just a touch here on the shelf at 5K to boost it up. I filtered off some low frequencies to get rid of some of the um, uh, mud from the guitars, you know, short boost here, like around 4K or so, uh, a little boost. These are, uh, the thing about this, you know, the E-Series uh, with these, these boosts and cuts, it's a bit of a smoother sounding um, EQ uh, than the G-Series. The G-Series has a much broader range. Like you notice that all the boosting attenuations here are plus minus 15, right? So whether you're E uh, or G, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the black knob or brown knob type, you'll get that same kind of uh, boost cut uh, characteristic. And uh, so simple things, adding a little bit of body in here since I had the ability uh, to kind of cut some of that. So um, 
Uh, I'm not thinning them out too much. But it has like a nice, open, clean, really rich sound. <laughs> That's just like a real classic sound. I also did a little THD in there just to drive it a little bit. All right, so let's go here. Now, if I if I call up uh, this here, and now uh, what I'm gonna get is the G series. And just to kind of show you the G series, just to do a quick comparison. So a lot of the frequency selections I had are very similar. They're not identical, uh, but they're very similar. And um, so the the fundamental idea or what I wanted to kind of get to here, and then I'm going to do a quick comparison, is that maybe deciding, well, what should I have? You know, should I have the E or the G? And you may want both, or you may find that one is kind of better than the other. It's a little hard to do a comparison because the EQs don't work exactly the same way. So you see what I did here is a divide by three on the kick drum to get down that thump. And, and I kept this, you know, kind of a medium width. Sometimes I'll go very narrow with it, you know. But since it's the full drum mix, if it was just a drum uh, kick drum, I would probably go with a narrower cue here. And then just a little dip here, but this is on a shelf. That's why I stayed with the wider cue. I think that's what it is. So that's not 200 hertz. Uh, that frequency is 67 hertz, just like I was telling you. Um, and the compression settings are uh, more or less the same, or they should be the same. That should be a faster uh, release there. Yes, okay, that's correct. All right, and then that's uh, more on there. Okay, that's right. Okay, here we go. So this is the uh, the G series, and uh, similar types of things with the guitars, uh, and with the compression, right? Similar settings. Okay, uh, so I tried to match it up as much as I could, and then the EQ settings as much as I could as well. I also balanced the output gain here, um, but you'll notice that the the boost attenuations, they're not numbers on there, just depends how much you're going, but just to, to give you an idea here, like that's plus 20 <laughs> and minus 20 versus plus 15, minus 15. So if you start pushing knobs there, that's plus 22, minus 22. Um, there's a lot more gain range and there's a lot more grab to it. When you start pushing that EQ, it just like, just really like you feel like you're doing something. <laughs> really, you know, pretty heavy duty. So, all right, here we go. So if you notice here, and, and again, let's like the EQs are not identical to each other. So I had to do some, you know, some slight variations from each other. But the overall characteristic difference is embedded right in this here. You notice that the G EQ and the G uh, console has like a, a very like super fo focused mid rangey kind of sound. Whereas the E series gives you a bit more warmth on the low end and a bit more presence or air on the top end. And you could really hear that difference between the two. Um, and when the G-Series consoles came out, again, there was sort of like a split with the, all the, um, the diehard SSL engineers. Some people loved it. Uh, I happened to really like the G-Series. I never hated working on E-Series console, but I really liked working on the G-Series. Just felt like when you were grabbing for something, you could just carve up sounds with this, especially with the G-Series. If you have something that is like a mess and and you just want to carve it up and turn it into something new this eq shreds it will just completely deconstruct and reconstruct something with it feed that into the compressor 
and uh, use that to sort of pull the sound back together. And, and you can completely restructure a record like no other EQ and like no other console can do. So it's really like amazing for that. The E-Series is probably a bit better for me for things that are sonically much closer to what you want just from the beginning, where you're not going in thinking it's like, I'm going to have to really carve this up and get creative to make this work. Um, it's a much smoother sounding, especially when you're working with the brown knob EQ. And just that short comparison would just give you um, a, um, a sense of the tonal characteristic difference. You may find yourself attracted to one over the other just with this short example, but don't necessarily let that be the judge. I think um, in terms of just what I was saying there about the ability to really kind of take something and carve it up, uh, the G-Series is, you know, that's right on point for exactly what you want. And this, now it has the look, it had the sonic characteristics before, now it's got enhanced sonic characteristics and the look of a real SSL. And uh, and this is hands down the, the best. Um, there are a lot of E-Series uh, EQs, and this is right at the top of the list there, if not the top, the best, um, um, this, E channel strip. It's probably the one that I would go to, and what pushes it over the top for me is the TMT stuff. Uh, this is hands down the best G. You don't see a lot of G emulations that are out there, but this is hands down. There's nothing even close. Uh, so really good work, uh, as always, by Brainworks. Um, and uh, there you have it. I guess the plugins of the week uh, from Mixing with Mike. Plugin Alliance BX Console 4000 SSL ENG, now certified by SSL.